Hi guys, in this video I will show you how I am using a self-made edge bridge circuit to increase the power of my remote control car. I am not discussing how to solder the circuit together because, this, uh, because that is fairly straightforward in case if you have basic knowledge in electronics, but I included all the schematics and components that I am using. Because I know that most of you guys are interested to get straight to the result and not as interested to know all the little details and create a circuit yourself, I created another video where I show how to use an already existing edge bridge circuit that you can buy online and that you can use to upgrade your car, so be sure that you check that one out. If you are however interested to know all the details, check out my previous video where I explain how the H-Bridge circuit operates in case if you didn't watch it already. You can find all the links in the video description or at the end of this video and now let's start with our video. If you saw my previous video, you should know how simple edge bridge circuit operates and now we can figure out how to use the circuit to increase the power of our remote control car. First let's look at the block diagram of a cheap remote control car that has no edge bridges. The block diagram of a cheap remote control car looks fairly simple. It consists of a voltage source, microcontroller unit with receiver circuit, antenna and two electric motors one to turn the car left and right and the other one to move forwards and backwards. The nice thing about these cars is that they are simple, cheap and requires only some 3 1.5 volt batteries to work, but uh, they are slow and that takes all the fun away. It is nice that we can uh, co connect both motors directly to the microcontroller pins, but because microcontrollers usually are made to operate with something around 5 volts, that becomes the limitation and the reason why the car is so slow. That's where edge bridge becomes useful. Let's look at the block diagram of more expensive remote control car that has edge bridges. As we can see, it has all the components that the cheaper version, but in this case we have more powerful voltage source and it also has voltage regulator circuit before the microcontroller unit and two edge bridges between the microcontroller unit and the electric motors. The voltage regulator circuit is needed because 12 volts would damage the microcontroller unit. So we have to bring the voltage down to 5 volts. The current flow from the 12 volt voltage source through electric motors is controlled by the control signals that are coming from the microcontroller unit and that are controlling the edge bridges as we discussed in previous video. In my case to save some money on components, time on the upgrade and to make the circuit more power sufficient, I decided to make the circuit like this. I kept the original 4.5V power supply to power the microcontroller unit and one of the motors that is responsible for steering but I added one edge bridge for the motor that moves the car forwards and backwards in combination with 9 volt battery. That way I didn't have to make too many changes to the car and the 9 volt battery seemed to be a good choice because of its small weight and 9 volts seemed to be close to the maximal voltage for the motor that this car has. Because in this case uh, the weakest link is the motor be sure that you don't increase the voltage so much that you damage the motor. Unfortunately, in most cases it is hard to find any information on, on these motors and you simply have to take the risk, as in my case. Of course, you can always use something in between 4.5 volts and 9 volts to play it safe. Now when we are finally done with theory, we can move to the practical edge bridge implementation. First, solder the edge bridge circuit as it is shown in this figure. It's always a good idea to put your circuit together on a breadboard before soldering to be sure that it really works and there are no mistakes. I have displayed the serial numbers of the transistors and the exact resistor values that I used right next to each component. I want to mention that the resistor values can be slightly different from the ones that I used. You can find the 
spin out of each transistor in its corresponding data sheet that you can search online. I am not saying that this is the best selection of components because I bought them in the local electronics store and there isn't much to choose from. But I will try to look for some alternatives on Amazon and post the links in uh, my blog in case if you are interested to build this circuit yourself. Although buying a pre-made edge bridge circuit might be a cheaper and faster option and in my next video I will cover that as well. You can find a link to my blog in the video description together with the rest of uh, the information. If we are looking at our circuit board, there are 7 wires coming from it right now. The 9V wire connects to the plus of our 9V battery and the GND 9V wire connects to the minus of that battery. Wires M1 and M2 are connected to the electric motor. Wires C1 and C2 are connected to the control pins of the microcontroller unit and the GND car wire is connected to the remote control car's ground. Now I will show you step by step how to connect the edge bridge to your remote control car. First open your car. You should see there are two wires that are going from the circuit board to the motor. Cut those two wires in half. Now those two wires that are coming from the control board connect to edge bridge connection C1 and C2. And those two wires that are coming from the motor connect to edge bridge connection M1 and M2. Don't worry too much about mixing C1 and C2 wires in place. The only thing that can go wrong is that the car will go backwards instead of forwards, in which case you simply have to swap the two wires in place. Same applies to the M1 and M2 wires. When you are done with those four wires, continue with the 9V battery. Connect the 9V wire to the plus and the GND 9V wire to the minus of your battery. Be sure to connect them correctly, because you might damage the circuit if you mix them in place. Last thing that is left is the GND car wire, and this might be the most confusing one. This is simply the minus of the power source that your car originally has. If you look at your car, there should be a black wire coming from the battery compartment. You can either solder an extra wire there, or simply connect the GND car wire to the spring that is holding the battery in place. When that's done, put your car back together and you should be ready to test it. This is how the car runs with the original 4.5 volts. And here it is with that age bridge that I made. As you can see, there's a huge difference in the power and the best thing is that the car goes both ways. Before I end my video, I want to share a few more things. If you use a lot of electronics that requires batteries, it's always a good idea to buy a pair of rechargeable ones. Although they are quite expensive at first, in comparison with conventional batteries, they will save you some money in the long run. I can surely say that uh, I could have bought a set of rechargeable batteries for the money that I spent on regular ones while making these videos. So I am planning to buy a set of rechargeable batteries myself. I did some research and there is one brand that really sticks out and those are the Analoops. Although it looks like they are the best that are out there at the moment, uh, they are a bit pricey so I looked for some alternatives. One of them that seem to be worth the price are Amazon Basics. Although they don't perform as well as Analoops, it looks like they would do the work. I am still deciding which ones uh, to choose, so in case if you have any experience with either of these, leave a comment and share your experience. In case if some of you are interested to check them out, I will leave a link in the video description below. 
So that's it for today's video. If you want to see how you can use an already existing Edgewood circuit to save some time and probably also some money on your upgrades, be sure that you check out my next video in the top left corner. For more interesting videos check out my channel and my blog and don't forget to hit that like button in case if you found this video useful. See you soon!